traders, good I'd like to say welcome to the uh, uh, mentoring session today with Mayor. I'd like to get a quick sound test for myself, make sure everybody can hear me. And Mayor will be in uh, right away here, going to be talking about uh, bottom-up analysis. And I believe you guys are going to have a great time this afternoon, great mentoring session here uh, with Mayor. And uh, we look forward to hosting you. So sound is good there. We'll bring Mayor in here. We're going to start on time so we can get out on time. We appreciate you being here, and um, we are all about keeping things on time. We respect your time as well as ours. And uh, as soon as Mayor gets in here, we'll start things up. Look forward to a great training session today, everybody. Had a great afternoon of trading. And here's the second part here of training along with trading, learning, trading, and gaining with TradeNet. Okay, Mayor? Yep, I'm right here. Hey, guys. Can I get a quick sound test? Actually, I'm going to lower my sound a little bit because I think it's a bit too high. So it should be good right now. Um, okay, good. Great, great. Uh, we can start. Uh, okay. As you can see, the topic of our lesson today is uh, bottom-up analysis. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, I'll take it over from here. And um, we're going to talk today about uh, a way that you are supposed to be, well, according to my way, uh, analyzing the stock before you trade it. Now, usually, bottom-up analysis or top-down analysis, which we're going to talk about uh, in a few minutes, is referred to not really in trading, but more in investing. So you will hear people talking about that in investing more than they do about trading. However, it can be applied to both. So personally, I'm using the bottom-up analysis when I'm trading a stock, and uh, it's quite simple. I don't want to get into too many details about that, but I also learned that a lot of people, whenever they trade, are not really working with a system, and you should be working with a system. Now, of course, there's there's way to work only by a system, a certain system, and without any, as I call it, the art of trading. I don't believe in that. I believe in incorporating both the art of trading and a system. So in, in my understanding, you should be doing both, but it should be based on a system. So bottom-up analysis is a system. That's Nothing's going to be new to you. I'm just going to lay it down on a I want to say paper, actually, it's a, uh, it's a PowerPoint presentation, but I'm going to lay it down on the PowerPoint presentation in a way that it's just going to make sense and hopefully will bring some, well, I would say a little bit more um, order into your, uh, uh, into your trading life. So let's talk about bottom-up analysis, or before that, I'm going to talk about what is the difference between bottom-up analysis and top-down analysis. Uh, which are, of course, different. But you know what, before I get into that point, let me just talk about the basics. The basic is we want to make money. We want to succeed. We want to find a, tra a trade, we want to take a trade, we want to make money, we want to move in into the trade, either long or short, doesn't matter, exactly at the right time, at the right point, and have the biggest and best success rate ever. So that's why we are for. That's what we're doing here. Now, you know, making 50% success rate that everybody can do, every monkey can do that. Because with 50% success rate, whatever you do, wherever you click the button, you're going to make uh, either a winner or a loser. Uh, the the idea is, of course, to have more than that. Now, since uh, commission are involved and a little bit of spread, you know, even the best spread in the market would be one cent, then you need more than 50%. Uh, usually, well, we usually say you need 55% or more in order to make money. And that's true. My success rate is higher than that because I'm very, because I'm very uh, experienced. Uh, usually when traders are starting to trade, they have less than 50%. Now that's the interesting part because, you know, it's not just about trading and just about rules. It's also about your mind. It's also about mental trading. So the, the, the very interesting part is that new traders, novice traders have less than 50%. Uh, the, the funny part is really, 
if 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 I'm gonna if I'm gonna tell you, for example, I'm I'm always joking about this, but if I'm gonna tell you now to start trading, let's say you let's assume you're a novice trader and every novice trader loses money in the market to start with. So if I, if you're a novice trader, if I'm, if I'm gonna give you a mission, and your mission will be today, I want you to lose money. Can you actually do that? If you try to lose money, you are actually going to gain money. I'm not joking. I'm serious. I'm I'm absolutely serious about that. When I'm talking to new traders, if I may order them to lose money, they will gain. If they will try to gain money, they will lose because that's where the mental trading kicks in. That's the main problem of a trader, the mental trading. Now, let's assume you get over that. And you come to the point where you know the basic rules and you start controlling uh, the way you trade, then you slowly move up from 50%. Uh, over 60% is regarded as a good trader. 65% is usually regarded as a very good trader. Uh, 70% we, we, we say it's God. Only God can have a 70% success rate uh, throughout time. My success rate is 68%, which means I'm moving into <laughs> whatever. So the thing is, um, we need to have a higher as possible success rate. One of the best ways to do that is using a system and the bottom up or the top down analysis is very, very important. So bottom up um, analysis, the, the, the big difference between bottom up analysis is, is what you do first. Um, do you look at the bigger picture first or do you look uh, from the details? I look first at the details and the reason I do that is because I'm naturally watching the intraday. So I'm watching a stock and I'm watching it uh, in inter its intraday move and then I'm starting to analyze it and from the intraday move I move up until I get to the larger uh, picture. Uh, there's usually when people are investing money, they would do the opposite. They would look at the larger picture, meaning what the market's doing, uh, what's the industry is doing, and a lot of other things when they start looking down at the stock and then they'll come to the technical analysis and they say, okay, if they look at the technical analysis at all. Well, usually investors do look at technical analysis. When I started trading, there was a big, big debate. I'm talking about 18 years ago and uh, I'm not, I don't have to go that far. I can go back even six or seven or eight years ago. There was still a very big debate whether investors core investors should look at technical analysis and the main idea the, the, the most investors wouldn't ever I mean they, they would be totally in, in, against looking at technical analysis during the last uh, few years let's say the last decade or so um, they started looking more and more into technical analysis I myself I look into uh, fundamental analysis too uh, that's a part of the bigger picture in my opinion I don't only use technical analysis. My, I, I probably use 80% technical analysis and 20% fundamental. Sometimes I don't use it at all. But on average, I would say I'm 80% technical analysis and 20% fundamental analysis. And um, I wasn't that for uh, long. When I started trading, I was 100% technical and that was wrong. So that's all a part of bottom up analysis and top down analysis. So let's talk more about the way I think you should be looking at the stock that you're trading. And again, that's what I use. You don't have to use the same, but that's what I do. That's what I look for. So I look for bottom to top analysis. And bottom to top analysis, actually, I would like to ask you, what would be the first thing you would look at in a stock? I mean, if you're trading a stock, what would be the first thing you would look at? Just help me out here. Now, you look at volume, fine. Price chart, trend, volume again, show, up or down, range, good, spread, absolutely. Percentage move, correct, intraday pattern, absolutely. All is true. Fine. Okay, great. What I just put a list and uh, let's go through the list and um, again it does not necessarily have to be exactly in that uh, order 
and I may have forgot some some things where I, I already see that uh, some of the things that you mentioned is are very very important so the first thing I do is I look at intraday formation you know what let's do the best thing I can do is a screen share with you and um, and let's go to well one of our trades today what was it oh, it's here we traded GLNG okay so look at GLNG we shorted this stock today we shorted it right over here actually let me uh, go to one minute candles here so we can see that a little bit more clearly um, we shorted GLNG today uh, and yeah so stock gapping down it's down right now 27% so as you can see it was here day before it came down dramatically and then as usual I'm looking for stocks that are gapping down and then it came down and then moved up a little bit and then came, came down again we short that one in fact I, I didn't keep the last quarter and I did not enjoy what you're seeing here because it moved up a little bit too much but that was a great trade actually I have it on my charts here that's a trade I gained $1300 today so I really enjoyed this trade and uh, didn't uh, really continue for the for the bigger move sadly but uh, nevertheless that was a very very nice trade so GLNG uh, was a short now what did we look for when we shorted the stock we looked for first the fact that it gapped down so then you take a good look at uh, the gap down and you say well if this stock gapped down that much usually it's going to continue meaning gap and go usually stocks that gap down more than three percent continue that's my bread and butter kind of trades shorted it right over here was looking for this move that was an amazing move that's what gave me my my money today and uh, glng as it gap down and continue to move down the technical formation here that was a nice technical formation and i started by the technical formation of the stock now if i didn't see anything right Use, w watching the intraday formation meaning the trend uh, the fact that it came down the fact that it came down with a gap the fact that it came down and pulled back up and then had a nice technical formation I wouldn't even take a next the next look, move at it there were other stocks today that I didn't trade and some of them worked out great because they just didn't have the right technical formation uh, do you happen to remember some of the stocks that uh, came down today I don't I think DLTR that was one that uh, we missed today for example DLTR came down very nice today but didn't really give me a chance to move in that was the second candle it came down now I really wanted to short this one today it kept down um, it's down 14% right now but the second one minute candle came down that's not enough for me as a technical trader so I usually look for at least the third candle well sometimes I go for the second if I really really love it but that's that would be a very very dangerous trade so DLTR came down in the second candle came down under the lows that would be very very dangerous stock that came down that much uh, and the second candle could easily move up and uh, uh, put put us in risk so then it continued to move down and I'm really really sorry that I missed DLTR today but it just give me, didn't give me the right technical formation so not much I could do GLNG did give me a very nice technical formation came down pulled back up returned now so that of, of course DLTR could have been traded later there was a nice technical formation later but I was involved with other trades that time or actually I wasn't <laughs> trading anymore at that time so the thing is I, I always start with the technical formation that's my first th the first thing I'm, 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 I'm watching now the second thing I'm watching is the volatility is is the sorry the intraday move and, and the intraday move is very very important so I mentioned GLNG came down 26% so if it came down 26% then uh, it's probably going to continue down if I see a nice technical formation let's go back to uh, my screen sharing I'll answer your question later I can see that you're asking that's great that you're using the Q mark because that really helped me when I'll, I'll go back to your questions so let's assume GLNG did the exact same thing but GLNG would have been trading at the same price as yesterday for example if GLG did the same thing here meaning it's it it the day before 
it finished here and then let's assume it came down a little bit moved up nice technical formation and then a breakdown just like happened of course if that would have happened here then we could have made some uh, nice income here trading it down but I wouldn't touch it I wouldn't I would like to short a stock that everybody hates when a stock is down like GLNG 27 almost 27 percent that mean a lot of people hate it today why that's a part of 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 the tech of, of of what you're supposed to be doing the the bottom-up analysis but we'll get to that later so GLNG came down 27 percent when the stock is down 27 percent well tell you what it's could easily move another two or three percent when the stock is at zero, let's assume GLNG did not gap down and you expect it to move down two or three percent because as a trader you need it to you need it to be volatile, then your chance of a stock that will move just you know out of the gate one or two or three percent today are very slim. You don't usually get that. You don't usually get that move because when a stock is not really gapping up or down, when the stock is just, you know, inbound, up 0.2%, down 0.1%, stuff like that, you just don't get this extra move uh, when, when, when you read it. Now, the stock is down 27%, I can trust it to move down a few more. Look at that. For example, when from the point we took it, which is approximately $29, okay? until the lows over here that's 28.25 if we're talking about percentage of 75 cents 75 cents it's almost three percent two and a half percent move so that was a two and a half percent move that we enjoyed and how long did it take it to move that much one two three minutes looks more like two minutes really to me so in two minutes it moved down two and a half percent that's what we're looking at we look at at stock that are volatile if it was over here and I would have seen the same technical formation I would just look sideways I wouldn't trade it that's it not interested so that would be the second thing I'm looking at the intraday percentage move now that doesn't always mean that it's going to be volatile so I'm also looking for volatility so uh, that depends on the stock that you're trading let's go back to the chart um, I didn't take a look at CMCSA but I do know that it is a very low volatility stock so here's a click on CMCSA well <laughs> a big move today <laughs> well it caught me off guard but still is not a big when you take a look at the numbers here when you take a look at the numbers here this uh, this is not you see the breakdown in CMCSA it's it's not a bad example actually look at this very nice breakdown formation here right 31.35 how far did it move 10 cents nice breakdown over here 31.24 how far did it move approximately 12 cents so you see CMCSA couldn't be trusted as a stock that is moving HPQ I'll take a look at that I don't really remember how it is yeah thank you it's it's really is a stock which personality is you just want, don't want to trade that so assuming you find a nice technical formation in HPQ and that looks like an, a fair formation okay over here for long that would be you go long at 22.25 and it will move up like seven cents so that would be the personality of HPQ is that an interesting stock to trade no it's not so it's not only about the percentage move it's also about how far can it move once it triggers so CMCSA wasn't actually a bad example because you see it's in fact a very good example stock is down 1.4 percent you 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 may think well wow I want to trade this one I mean it's a big mover today it's down 1.4 percent but when it breaks down or in other days moves up breaks out that stock can move 10 cents that's its personality and we've just seen HPQ which is even much more terrible worse than that so the 
volatility of the stock is very, very, very important. Let's go back to the slides. So next thing I want to talk to you about is the volume. Now, certainly, and, and I do it in that order. Really, I do it in that order. Well, not always, but it's, it's more or like in that order. The first thing I see would usually be that. I would first look at the intraday formation. I like it. Wow. But the stock is not down, so I don't like it anymore. Or, well, it's down 1.5%, well, interesting, or up 1.5%. Now, what is volatility? Then I'm looking at the chart, and I'm looking at the numbers. Well, it's moving up 10 cents whenever it's triggering. Well, not interesting. Oh, well, it's moving over 20%, over 20 cents, sorry. We usually trade stocks that are, has the potential to move over 20 cents. Sometimes we'll take less than that, but that would be quite rare. And then you look at the volume. So what's the volume like? When the stock is down 1.5%, or up 10%, you wanna, you know what, I want to take a look at something here, hold on a second, let me just, um, hmm. hold on, okay, let's go to screen sharing, how about this one? Look at uh, CCRC, whatever it is. Look at CCRC. That's a huge upside move. This stock moved up today 24%. Could we find an entry? Could we find a trade? Let's take a look at 5-minute candles, okay? Let's take a look at 5-minute candles. 5-minute candles. Well, the stock is up trending. Look at this huge move. Of course, we can find a trade. We can go along over here. That would be an amazing trade. Move it at $16 and end up at 19 But I would never touch it. Why? Because the stock is up 24% with a volume of 400,000 shares. You see, when a stock is up 400,000 shares in the first 10 or 15 minutes, I would gladly trade it. When it's up that much and we're just like 30 minutes or uh, 20 minutes from the close of the trading day you you're not supposed to be touching a stock like that not with a two meter pole you're not supposed to be touching that one and i don't care how the technical formation looks like the volume is just too low now of course that's an example of a stock that moved up and you wish you would but if you trade 100 trades like that 60 will be terrible losers 40 may be amazing winners, but end result, after 10 years from now, uh, you'll be losing money. So it's, 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 it's not, it doesn't worth your time. It, does, it just doesn't worth your time. Just don't do that. So volume is very, very important. And then if I like everything I saw till now, and that has all to do with the intraday formation, if I liked everything I, I've seen till now, then I will always click on the daily chart. Well, always is not always right. Always would be more like 95% of the time I would move to the daily chart. Why not always? Why, why wouldn't it be always? Well, let's first click the button so daily chart is important. Why wouldn't it be always? It wouldn't be always because sometimes I look at the intraday chart and the intraday chart looks so amazing and everything clicks in, uh, the intraday chart, the trend, um, the, the, the technical formation, that's the intraday chart, the volatility, the volume, the daily, everything looks great other than the daily. I didn't see the daily. I may click the button because I see the stock is breaking out or breaking down right now and I want to short it. I may click the button even if I don't see the daily. And then I look at the daily and I may be very disappointed, but I still like the intraday and I know that I would take that trade even though the daily may have not been the one I was looking for. So for me, watching the daily is very, very important. Let's go back to GLNG, okay? GLNG. So that's the intraday. Now here's the daily. Recently, stock was up quite a lot. Now it came down today very, very strong. So look at the support lines that there are here. There's plenty of them, support lines that it broke down, whatever. When the stock is up that much and then crashes down the way it does, well, that means a lot of enemies. To start with, the stock came down almost 20% and then continued. So the thing is, when the stock, I don't really 
you know, that's in fact that is an example where I don't really need to look at the daily because stock was down 20% or so. So why should I really look at the daily? Because it's it's down that much. Everybody hates it. So sometimes you find a stock that looks great. Sometimes I'm a little bit worried. For example, if you take a look at uh, MU, I'm a little bit worried. MU was a great trade. I, I made today over a thousand dollars in MU. That was a great trade. I shorted it. We enjoyed this one today. So that was a fine trade. But when you take a look at the daily of MU, that's not something you should like. That's not something you should like. From the point of view of the daily, I don't want to touch that stock. But then I took a look. At, I, I took a look at the intraday formation. Big gap down, pulled back up, shorted it whenever we did. So I really did like it. So in in that matter, I I think that uh, MU won by looking at the intraday alone, and then I didn't really need to look at the daily. But it, it, I, I certainly advise to take a look, good look at the uh, daily chart and not only in the daily chart, also in the weekly chart because sometimes you just don't see a lot of things. And once you take a look at the daily and once you take a look at the weekly and you see the support resistance, look at uh, some fundamental. I don't always have the time to look at fundamentals, but it's very, very um, good idea to look at fundamentals. Now, uh, fundamental may mean uh, industry, uh, company. Now, what about uh, GLNG? What industry is GLNG? Do you have any idea? Did you check? Did you happen to check what is GLNG? Do you know? Anybody knows? That's a question. Yeah, I can look at uh, CLSD as an example, Steve. Yeah. Yeah came down, broke down. Yeah, good example. No clue. Well, GLNG is is uh, a gas company. It's um, some um, s s gas. Uh, I actually, actually, you know, I don't I'm not sure they're looking for gas or producing gas or or whatever. They are a gas or, or, or transporting gas. <laughs> this could be too. This could be too. Uh, so the thing is, this company had some bad um, quarterly report came out today and it crashed down. Just bad reports. That was a story. Now, usually I don't trade gas and oil companies. Why don't do that? Because it's an industry I don't really trust and I'm not really, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't like to trade stocks that has to do um, that are coming up or coming down due to industry news. So when there's industry news like, you know, oil companies came down last week and that was because Saudi Arabia and uh, Russia announced that they're going to uh, increase their production at the current price. So they 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 decided they're going to increase production. Oil came down several percents, and then oil oil company came down. I'm not going to trade that. I'm not going to trade industry news. I will trade a certain company's news. For example, GLNG, although it's in the oil or gas industry, for me they're all the same. Uh, that would be something I would gladly trade because it had its own personal news. It did not come today because Saudi Arabia announced something that has to do with the oil industry. It came down today because of bad reports. And usually when the stock is gapping down that much, it will continue. So that would be the bigger picture. Look at the industry, look at the company. Sometimes looking at the industry. Let's say I liked everything. Let's say I liked, look at what's going, at everything that is written here. Uh, I like the intraday formation, the intraday move, the volatility, the volume. Blah, blah, blah. But it's an oil company and it came down today because uh, some kind of uh, industry news. Okay, so if it's an oil company and everything clicks in here, I still won't trade it. Unless it has some kind of uh, specific news, which would make the, the big difference for me. Now, do you have to take a look at uh, GLNG and find a specific, if the news today were specific or not specific news? Well, 
with GLNG you don't. Why? Because you look at the oil industry and you see there's no there's no crash in the oil or, or gas industry in that matter. There's no crash. The oil or gas industry did not crash today. And certainly if they did come today down, let's say two or three or four percent or whatever, which is possible, GLNG came down twenty percent. So if the stock is down twenty percent. That's some personal news. That's some specific news in the company. You don't have to check that. You don't have to go to go to, to, to Yao Finance or whatever and look for the reason why GLNG came down. Well, I happen to know that because I was doing my homework pre-market. So I was doing my homework pre-market. I really wanted to know what's the reason. So I, I found out it's bad news. And then I saw General Motors uh, uh, moving up. And I also found out it was some news with their investment in some... Um, you know, how they call this aut autonomous cars and something like that. So it was specific news. And we traded uh, MU and MU uh, came down because of something else. I can't remember. But I was looking because I was doing my homework. Because an hour before the market started, in fact, a little bit less than that today, I think 30 minutes or so before the market opened, I was doing my homework. I looked for gappers, and then I really wanted to know why. I wanted to know if it's industry news. Again, I don't need to when the stock is gapping down 20%, but I was curious. Sometimes you relate to the news. You understand the news, and you, once you see the news, uh, what the news is all about, it makes you feel a little bit safer, which is also a bit dangerous, but that's uh, that's another uh, that's another issue. So all of the things that we're talking about are bottom bottom to top analysis. If we talk about top to bottom analysis, top down analysis, we would usually start with the industry, with the company, with the market, and then we move down to the weekly, to the daily, to the. So it's only the direction. I start by looking stocks that have nice intraday formation. And then I move to the bigger picture. Other, usually investors, do the opposite. It's all fine. It's okay. That's just day traders are starting usually with intraday formation. So in my opinion, in order to make sure that you're on the right side of each and every trade, you should start with the basics. And that's the basics, meaning you should have a list maybe this list maybe maybe this list maybe just maybe add to this list whatever you should start with your own list whether bottom up or top down analysis whatever and just tick it really i'm not joking just tick it tick one by one and you should say to yourself do i have a good intraday formation or i just love this stock that's why i'm buying it i'm buying it because it's apple and i love this stock and whatever uh, do i go long if the intraday move is just 0.2 percent what does it mean if the stock is up 0.2 percent or it's up one and a half percent if it's up one and a half percent everybody's watching it it goes up on the scanners of everybody and that means there's a lot of people who are going to join you if it has a good intraday formation. So if his stock has a good intraday formation, which means a lot of technical analysis traders are trading it, and trading is all about self-fulfilling prophecy, if you didn't understand it till now. And then you have a good technical formation, but the stock is up 0.2%. Nobody's watching it because it's not on the screeners of everything. Well, if it's Apple, then maybe a lot of people are watching it. But that would be 1% of the companies. So... The rest of the companies, the non-Apple type of the companies, you shouldn't be trading them because nobody's watching them. It's They didn't come up on the screen. There's 10,000 stocks in the US market. How would you find a stock if it's not gapping up or down at least 1%? So if a stock is gapping up 1% and it has a good technical formation, and now let's go to the rest. It's volatile enough. It has the right volume. The daily chart support it. Why do I need a daily chart? I need a daily chart to find support resistance lines one thing. The second thing, I want the investors to help me. I want the core traders to help me. I don't want only the day traders to help me. I want the ones who go in for the long term. I want the ones who see the breakout and wait for the breakout and wait for the breakout for the past two or three weeks. And then we have a nice breakout formation. And that's not only the day traders who are coming in now. These are the investors who are coming in. So you watch the daily chart. It helps you. And again, just remember where we started. We started talking about everybody has a 50% if you're not a new trader. <laughs> then you have less than 50%. And then you move up. 
you move up to I don't know 55 percent if you use some of this some of these rules and you may move up to a little bit more and then you got a little bit more experience and you have this, you add a little bit of an out to the trading and then you move up over 60 percent 65 percent and whatever so you try and move higher and try to add but have a list tick the things that you're seeing here and if you don't tick each and every tick you should don't trade it i don't tick each and every tick some of the ticks I just don't have them meaning sometimes I will take a look at the daily I don't like the daily I will trade it should you I'm not sure if you're experienced you should if you're not experienced you shouldn't should you be trading five or seven trades a day or maybe be satisfied with one of or two trades a day well I think if you're starting out certainly be satisfied with one or two or three trades a day don't over trade so if you don't tick each and every box just don't take it maybe you trust me when i'm trading and follow me fine i'm not saying it's wrong but you need to understand why i'm doing that and you need to understand or even ask questions so that was all about uh, everything i wanted to talk about i'm going back to your questions it's a good time to start writing questions if you have any and I'll go back to your first questions and see. I can only go to the the, the ones that uh, used the question mark. I won't see the rest. So if you have any questions, just add them now. So the first first question today was by Noel. Uh, what is the idea of shorting uh, gap down stocks? Uh, where in fact, in fact, um, they are down already. Well, uh, no, the thing is, we're not talking today about specifically about uh, gap down stocks, but um, basically, if I'm shorting a gap down stock, that is a stock that is gapping down more than 3% usually, again, not 100% of them, but more than 3%, and therefore, it should continue, meaning gap and go. Uh, the interesting thing, we start the Star Trader course this week on Sunday, so... Uh, the this is one of, of course the main topics we're going to talk about why I mean it's not only about telling you that I short stocks more than three percent gap down I would short them expecting them to come down it's only ab also about the technical formation a lot of other rules too so we get into details in the style trader course which starts this Sunday but but you're welcome to ask me whenever you see that uh, whenever you see me trade in the trading room and I will be very happy to say but I'm not going to get into it right now um, Adeline ask uh, you short uh, at the close of the pullback yes I look for the pullback and then I would short Aaron asked um, how would you determine how much that stock may actually move well, based on uh, previous uh, price action, Aaron, that's a good question. When I take a look at um, a stock that I'm trading, so let's go back to the screen sharing here. And I don't know, let's let's take a look at, uh, again, you mentioned earlier, HPQ, right? So HPQ, five minute candles. Um, here it is. Uh, look at previous price action. So you see the price action today is terrible but look at yesterday so yesterday looks like it made a nice upside move started here let's call it this a reversal it was 2140 to 226 that's actually a very very nice interesting move by hpq a very unlikely move so you know usually i wouldn't trade it let's say there was a good i don't see that because it came down then moved up i don't think i would have traded it but let's assume there was a nice technical formation here and i would go, like to go long in my opinion, I, I I wouldn't. Why I wouldn't go long? Because previous price action of HPQ shows me that that stock doesn't move much. Look at this breakdown over here. Okay, that's a nice technical formation. 2140 came all the way down to 2123. So uh, that would be like a 15 cent, uh, 17 cent move. And that's a very nice breakdown. Not enough. Not enough. You, you don't move exactly at the point, you move two or three cents below, you don't get the exact total move, you usually move out when it's moving up a little bit, so that would be maybe 10 cents trade. You don't trade HPQ, and I don't care if it came up yesterday nicely, but usually you just look back and you see what it's doing, what its previous behavior, what its personality. Can you assume CCRC trade was institutional that 
went up so much low volume um no ccrc came up with very very low volume so it's definitely probably not has nothing to do with institutional they don't trade stocks with such a low volume uh, this behavior and that volume usually has nothing to do with institutional traders this stock has um relatively low volume the average would be something like 200 300,000 shares a day and that wouldn't be a stock that institutional traders would uh, touch uh, can I look at uh, CLSD we looked at that I remember okay let's move to the next questions Cesario GLNG uh, Liqua yeah natural gas thank you uh, Steve asked here we see your split second decisions when you're looking at chart, what is the biggest indicator for action for you? Uh, biggest indicator for me, uh, Steve, would be the move. The biggest indicator that, that the one that would draw me in is what would be the percentage of the move of the stock that is that I'm about to trade. So did it move 2% today or 12% today or 0.5%? But that would always come after the, 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 the technical formation. So in fact, the the most important decision for me would be the technical formation but that is very clear i'm just taking a look at the chart and in a split of a second i would say that i like the technical formation and then i'm starting to look at the rest so the second thing i would look at and actually the first thing after the technical formation which is obvious for me would 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 be the percentage move okay it's up it's down and sometimes you also see or you also see that because you look at the chart and you see what is the percentage move but i would that would take me another two seconds to understand probably i don't know didn't count uh, do you research uh, lola ask do you research um the night before or only in the morning only in the morning i'm 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 i'm, I'm 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 not uh, <laughs> I'm not doing my homework uh, a day before Lola. I used to. I have to say I used to many 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 years. Ago. You just remind me something that I didn't do for a long long time. Really, I used to do some homeworks after trading day. When I started out trading, I would usually make my research after the trading day because that's where you can uh, make a research based on today's price action. But I don't do it anymore. I don't know. Maybe I'm just lazy. No, not really. It's it's a system that I'm trading. I just don't need it. Usually I would come an hour before. I try to do that a little bit less than an hour because there's a lot of stocks that are uh, coming out with use exactly one hour before trading day. So I would usually do that like 55 minutes before the trading starts. And I would, I would have plenty of time to do that. So I don't. But I, I used to do it for much longer periods time and uh, in, in invest more money more time in that and um, that taught me that was a good uh, period when I started out trading years ago that really helped me uh, become a better trader so I'm not saying it's wrong I'm just saying I don't do it anymore and he asked uh, what causes a stock to gap up to uh, stock gaps to close um, that would be another lesson Andy but usually it's institutional traders when stocks are closing um, and the stock are gapping down less than three percent that would usually be institutional traders and it all has to do with their anticipation of a profit so it's a little bit more complicated than that I would do wrong if I would get into details right now and again we do that in the star trader course in details but that would be uh, because of institutional traders uh, Thomas asks, uh, what time frame of candles should I trade in? I've been using one minute. Is that wrong? Uh, okay, uh, I use at the first 30 minutes, Thomas, I use one minute candles, but some of my trading systems require five minute candles. So I, the, the system I use for trading for trading for shorting stocks they that would usually be a one minute candle during the first 30 minutes and then i would move to five minutes it's not wrong to use one minute it only depends on the system that you're trading on many systems it would be wrong if you're talking about one minute candles after the 30 minute mark i would say that's wrong I'm not saying you shouldn't look at one minute candles, but if you look at one minute candles, let's say after 30 minute mark, and even in the first 30 minutes, depending on your system, that may be wrong. So usually you should be looking at five minute candles. The reason for that is because institutional traders are only watching 
five minute candle. And here comes the bell, market's closed. So institutional traders are only watching five minute candles. And if you're the only one who watch one minute candle, then you're not watching what the institutional traders are watching. And since they are 80% of the volume, then you are doing wrong. I trade stocks that are gapping down more than 3%. There's no, usually no institutional traders in them. Again, something we learn in the Star Trader course. These are regular retail traders. Therefore, I can use one minute candle. Five minute candles you should be using because all, not some, all, Institutional traders use five minute candles. And that means you should use it too. Very important. But on some systems, you shouldn't. But most of the time, you should. Uh, Daniel asks, uh, how do you, do you do your homework? Uh, do you use Finviz or Scanning Soundfell? Well, Daniel, there's a video I made. Uh, you can see it uh, in the YouTube channel that uh, really shows what I'm doing when I'm scanning stocks and things like that. For my intraday trading, I don't use Finviz. I don't. Uh, for my swing, I do. In fact, I have people doing that for me. I used to do that, but I have people doing that for me. And then I'm getting like uh, 30 different stock picks every week. And I'm looking for my swing picks out of that list. That comes from Finviz. So they are doing that. I didn't do it myself for a while, but I'm, I'm just concentrating on some of the picks that my people provide me. So yes, the origin comes from Finviz, but I don't do it on pre-market. But again, that depends on your system. If your system requires looking for stocks that are up, down, this or that percent, doing this, doing that, over the 200 moving average, over the 50 moving average, but below the 20 moving average, whatever. If you, if you have stocks that your system requires you to use Finviz, for example, you should, based on my system, and I only trade the first 90 minutes, as you know, then you shouldn't. Well, I don't need it. Some traders may. Uh, Henry asked the question, are, you, are there any other sources except uh, for the Colmex Top 20? Uh, we will pick stocks and day trading. There's several, Henry. I don't need them, but you can look for so many different screeners. Uh, Finwiz was, was, was mentioned here, which is a very good tool and a free one. So there's several other tools that you can use. Certainly don't have to use the Top the Colmex Top 20. And even for gap up or gap downs, you can you can look for um, pre-market movers i think if you look if you sell if you search for pre-market movers or whatever there's so many uh different uh places that you can find uh, stocks that are gapping up down or whatever uh, jason has a question the stock is uh falling fast who's buying the shares <laughs> okay good point uh, being sold Want to buy a stock that is falling? Uh, <laughs> good point. I can't seem to understand the concept. Why to buy a stock that is falling? I will just fall of my so oh, okay, catch it. Oh, can you explain that? Well, first thing, there, Jason, uh, there's market makers all the time. I mean, 60% of the volume in the market comes from market makers. Market makers are forced to buy stocks that are falling. So the, the, the deal between the market maker and the company that he represents, for example, every stock in the, U, in, in the New York Stock Exchange is handled by one market maker. The market maker has agreement with the company that says that for every cent that the company comes that the price comes down he's forced to buy this or that number of shares that was one of the outcomes of the crash that was in 87 I believe uh, what was the name Black Friday whatever I can't remember black whatever something black so um, there were some case some cases in history where stock prices just came down and so fast that you couldn't find any buyers. So people were on the phone lines, there, weren't, there wasn't internet back then, and trying to sell, but nobody was buying. And so one of the outcomes of that period was that market makers are forced to buy a stock that is coming down. Now, they're buying, and they're not the only one. There's so many idiots out there, sorry, there are people who are buying a falling knife, catching falling knives. There are people who think, well, it came down too much, I'll buy some. There are people who 
think the company has such a great fundamentals, it's probably going to come up in the, in, in the end. Sometimes they're right. But the thing is, you don't do that as a trader. You shouldn't do that as a trader. But who's the idiot who does that? Well, some of them are not idiots. Some of them are just forced to buy. Others are idiots. And other things they know better. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes they do know better. Uh, Cesario has a question. How do I prepare for the day trading? Oh, oh, he just posted the the link. Thank you very much, Cesario. He posted the link for my how do I prepare for my for my day trading. Uh, Jason, can you go over the criteria using Finwiz? Um, um, no, I don't go through the criteria I use in Finwiz. Um, if I would, I would have to kill you later. Joking, I just don't do that. I, I, I you know, um, first of all, I, 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 as I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's some traders like uh, Shlomo, for example, who's looking for stocks, and um, uh, these, these are things that we developed for so many years. Uh, Shlomo did too. We talk about the basic. We always talk about the basics. There's always the basic stuff. What do you look for in Finviz? But then to get drilled down inside the exact system. I don't think you'll find a trader that does that, that talks to you about that. Well, maybe there are. And it's always very personal. Um, question, Steve. Do you move the hard stop as the stock prices move up? Or do you originally give the partial? Uh, yeah, I certainly move the stops. Well, I certainly absolutely move the stops when I trade, especially if I'm not sitting in front of the computer. And it all has to do with, you know, intraday support resistance and stuff like that. How CLNG looks to you? How CLNG? Let me see if I can find CLNG. You, are you talking about GLNG? For what? I mean, it looks like a car crash. I mean, in like investing or trading or what? Uh, Julian has a question. Can you make a uh, class on criteria of the market maker and hedge funds? You know, when I teach the Star Trader course, almost everything I teach is about is about um, um, market makers, um, funds, uh, institutional traders, because everything we do it has to do with that. And I always talk about it. I just don't get into details. In the Star Trader course, I get into really details. So that's a part of the Star Trader course. But if you add up everything you hear in the training room, I always talk about the details, but not in, you know, just a lesson or so. Why don't I use, uh, why don't I trade uh, exponential moving average and follow the trend. Well, Vladimir, I do. But in, let me go back on that. You don't see me use a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, whatever indicators. Uh, you, use, you see me use uh, the view up. I usually use the view up, but you don't see me use different other indicators. It's not because I don't need them or because I think peop other people don't need them. I think you need them. I think I need them too. So why don't I use it? Because it's embedded in my mind. I don't need to take a look at the chart to know where the EMA is. I used to do that in the first 12 years. I no longer need it. If I look at the chart, I'll tell you where the EMA is. Or actually, I don't really need the EMA. I just need to take a look at the chart and understand it. I mean, when I look at the chart after 18 years, I take a look at the chart and I know exactly what I need to know about it. I know about the trends. I know about the EMAs. I know about whatever. I used to have so many indicators. I don't need them anymore. They're just noise for me right now. I don't need to watch them. I do use them. It's up here in my mind. Okay, so I teach about them. When I teach, I teach about indicators. I teach how to use them, and I think it's important to use them. Just that I don't need them anymore. Who was my mentor? My mentor was a guy named uh, Chris Mercer. He lives in Phoenix, Arizona. You can still find him online. He has his own um, 
educational service. He still is a friend. Uh, he's a nice person. He used to be my mentor. And the reason he became my mentor is because I just stumbled in once to his trading room, online of course. So I came to his trading room. We still have his trading room. Uh, so I came into his trading room and I liked what I saw and I immediately saw that this guy knows what he's doing. He understands what he's doing and then, you know, it started there and and then it became, he became my mentor. I mean, I flew over to Phoenix, Arizona, paid him $1,500 a day and he became my mentor. He couldn't resist the money. Is there a, a book except yours uh, that I can recommend? Tough question, Henry. Um, you know, you can learn something from every book you read. The problem is there are so many books out there that were written by people who don't really know how to trade. I mean, sorry, they know how to teach. They never were successful traders, and that becomes a little bit tricky. And I didn't really find, find much many books that I like. I like them when I started trading because, you know, when I started trading, I thought they knew what they're talking about. And then a few years later, I read them again and I was amazed to find out that it is impossible that this book was written, this or that book was written by a person who uh, really knows really makes money in trading. That took me maybe eight years to come to this conclusion because before that I still thought they were like amazing people and they know how to trade and they make a lot of money. But then when I read the book, I found out they can't mention this because it's impossible. How can they say that or this? It's just impossible. A person who makes money in the market couldn't try that. That you can say after several years of trading. Maybe they mentioned some systems that they didn't master. Maybe other systems they mastered and just wanted to fill up their 500 page book with something that they just don't master. I don't know, possibly. Maybe they do know how to make money. I'm not sure. Um, the books I would recommend you to buy are the ones that are not written by traders. You don't need more than, I, I believe, sorry. You don't need many more trading books, really. What you need to know is about the ins and outs of the, I believe, institutional traders. Look at the bigger picture. Look at the, 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 the traders, the institutional traders, their systems, hedge fund traders. They don't do what you do. You, 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 you're not likely to learn a system from them. You will learn how they think, what they believe, what they look at, and then when you get into the details of the intraday trading, which they will not help you. They will not help you because they can't trade intraday. They are trading billions of dollars or many millions of dollars. So they can't day trade. They can't day trade like you do. It's impossible for them to do that. But they can talk to you about what you don't do and you don't trade millions of dollars. <laughs> probably you don't do that. So if you don't do that, you will understand why they're moving in, let's say, at uh, the bottom. Why does the market reverse on a Monday morning after 30 minutes? Where do you think I got all of this information? I got it by talking to institutional traders, by reading their books, by you know, experiencing it uh, throughout the trading day and seeing that it actually works. So that's the kind of thing that you should be looking when you are uh, learning and don't get into the details of intraday trading. Maybe there are some books which are great. I don't know all of the books, of course, but I should, I, I, I think you should better look for, for books that has to do with, uh, with the broad picture, with something that you don't do, like hedge fund managers, for example, that the, the most interesting book I read are those. I don't have them in front of me. They're at my other home. If I had them, I would probably tell you which one I like, but I don't have it here. But there are several of them. Look for the more fa more famous one or so, whatever. Uh, do you have a routine when you sit down with computer or get my no, no, no meditation? Well, uh, no, Jay, I, I don't I don't have a routine. Really, I don't. I mean, maybe I, I do, but I don't think about it. But no, really, I don't have. Indicators I talked about. Uh, 
At Lina's question, I was struggled on Friday in the direction of the stocks. Is there a reason or is it just my mental? Friday is a tough day to trade. Adeline, it's a tough day to trade. You're not the only one who's struggling on a Friday. Believe me, you're not. So Friday is usually a tough day to trade. Guys, our time is up. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, session. Uh, thank you very much for being here with me today. Uh, of course, all recorded, so you can uh, listen to it again. Um, I may even put it on YouTube. I didn't uh, make up my mind about that yet. So I hope it was good for you and I hope you enjoyed and uh, thank you very much for being here with me today. And um, and um, I enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. And um, well, I want to say I'm going to meet you tomorrow in the trading room, but you know I have this seminar here in Berlin, so I'll be uh, with my class tomorrow. So that would be it. Uh, so I'll see you next week. And I, in fact, I'm going to be in the trading room. I'm, I'm maybe even writing some trades. So we'll see about that. And again, thank you very much. And uh, see you next time. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to join the TradeNet trading room for a free 14-day trial. TradeNet has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004, and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.